please give us the last information on the ground. What is the situation now? Nagda, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, the situation right now is that uh, we are finishing the effort to take control of what is happening inside the state of Israel. As you know, this uh, barbaric invasion of uh, more than 1,000 terrorists uh, into the Israeli territory uh, was uh, reached about two, 22 localities inside Israel. It attacked uh, a big party that was taking place mm -hmm. uh, near the border with the participation of about uh, 3,000 people that were massacred by the terrorists, uh, um, and uh, it took a pretty, uh, pretty uh, significant uh, time until the security forces managed to go house to house in each one of these villages and uh, verify the situation and clear the place from the terrorists. So finally, about, uh, after a little bit more than 48 hours, the situation inside Israel is under control. Uh, in addition, the army, uh, the Israel Defense Forces have managed to completely seal the border between Israel and the Gaza Strip. So there is no, there are no further invasions. As you know, uh, the invasions uh, took place not only through land, mm -hmm. but also through air and through sea. So at this point, uh, we are, uh, we have recruited uh, 300,000 of our reserve soldiers. Um, and uh, these uh, soldiers are now getting prepared, uh, getting the gear that they need, doing the training that they need, and, uh, and the commanders are doing the planning necessary in order to uh, carry out the next stage of uh, this operation the, to defend Israel that is going to include uh, a, a, a massive operation to remove mm -hmm. the Hamas uh, threat. Please tell me what shocked you the most? in this attack? Well, uh, there are many things that have completely shocked me, but uh, I think that uh, to see the pictures of uh, elderly, of uh, mothers being dragged with their babies out of their ho homes and uh, dragged into the Gaza Strip, to see people escaping the party and being shot. Uh, we have heard terrible stories about people trying to hide, for example, in a big uh, uh, bins and uh, terrorists uh, throwing grenades and uh, verifying they are killing innocent people, verifying that they, they, are, they, are, they are dead. These are pictures that we ha have never seen in the history of our country. And these are pictures that remind, you know, what ISIS did or even worse. So this shows that uh, these terrorists are really barbaric, that Hamas is an organization that is uh, not only terrorist, it's, it's criminal, it's, a, it's an organization that wants to remove the existence of the state of Israel, and they are ready to do anything. Um, and now, they, uh, those who managed to get back into the Gaza Strip are hiding behind civilians to try to uh, prevent us from, uh, from uh, taking action. What do you know about the condition of these hostages, of the captives? Well, not much. At this point, we haven't seen uh, much information uh, besides uh, some terrible pictures that uh, all of us have seen uh, in the media about the people being dragged into the Gaza Strip, uh, some children in cages, like, you know, being held like animals. These are really uh, shocking pictures, and, uh, and uh, we will have to take into account while we do our operation. We have uh, uh, designated uh, special teams that are going to gather intelligence regarding the location of the hostages to try to uh, uh, conduct the uh, rescue operations. Is there an accept acceptable sacrifice to give up at these captives in order to protect the entire country? It's a tough question. Yeah, of course it's a, it's a tough question. And uh, the, the sense we are getting from the government is that uh, we are not going to be um, we are not going to be extorted by the terrorists. Uh, Israel will do whatever it has to do. We are not negotiating with the terrorists, uh, unlike uh, some rumors that were put out by the Qataris, mm -hmm. that they are trying to pass some messages from Hamas. This is not going to happen. We are not going to negotiate uh, with uh, Hamas, uh, for sure not through the Qataris. So they, they are accomplices of Hamas. They are supporters of Hamas. And uh, we are not going to work with support of Hamas. Everyone is expecting now a full-blown attack on, on Gaza. 
Are there any measures to avoid hostage killing and other civilian uh, causalities? Well, of course, that Israel, unlike the terrorists, uh, is uh, going out of its way to protect civilians. We have uh, been uh, very careful mm -hmm. uh, when we uh, target uh, uh, military infrastructure to make sure that uh, civilians are have a chance to evacuate themselves before the bombardments uh, happen. And we have invented uh, a procedure that actually is pretty innovative and no other army used that before us. It's called knock on roof. We usually, the airplanes send a very small explosive to give a signal for the people that this building is about to be taken out. Telephone calls are being done. So civilians have a chance to evacuate the place so they are not hurt. Uh, of course, that this bears a price because once we do it, also the terrorists escape. But uh, this is one of the measures that we have to take in order to avoid the collateral damage. Of course, that in any war, uh, there will be collateral damage, and uh, any legitimate target, any legitimate, uh, any sorry, military target is a legitimate target. Uh, but uh, we are trying to go to do what we can in order to avoid the civilian casualties. Okay. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said it will be an unprecedented response. What does it mean, unprecedented response? Well, uh, if you have been following the dynamics between mm -hmm. Israel and the Gaza Strip since Israel withdrew from the Gaza Strip back in 2005, yes. uh, Israel has done whatever it, whatever it's possible not to enter the Gaza Strip again. Yes. Because we had the, the strong belief that if we want uh, to promote Palestinian self-rule, uh, we have to try to handle the situation uh, in a way that we don't have to enter and we don't have to assume responsibility mm -hmm. for the population of the Gaza. Unfortunately, this, has, this way of thinking has changed as a result of the events. Mm -hmm. And we have no choice. Like we didn't have no choice to enter Jenin uh, a couple of months ago. We have to enter the Gaza Strip if we want to neutralize the threat. And the target uh, or the aim that has been uh, defined by the government is to neutralize the capability of Hamas or any other terrorist organization to continue posing a military threat towards the state of Israel. So in order for the uh, Israeli Defense Forces to accomplish this, uh, this aim, uh, there's no doubt that we will have to enter deep into the Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. Is Israel prepared for an escalation involving other hostile forces like Hezbollah or maybe other countries from the region who already showed support for, for Hamas? Yes, so uh, it's no secret that uh, both Iran and Hezbollah are supporting Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad in a very massive way. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the reasons that Hamas uh, could uh, develop the capability to hurt Israel in such a way. Uh, and uh, we have warned the Lebanese government and we sent warnings to Hezbollah that we will not tolerate any attack on Israel from the north and that Israel will retaliate. Uh, and uh, you probably have seen also the support Israel uh, is uh, getting from the United States and the naval, massive naval presence of the United States in the area that I'm sure will add another layer of deterrence to the Israel deterrence against uh, other enemies that are thinking of getting involved in this uh, confrontation. Is this an operation or is this a war? Because it, if war, it, it is an asymmetric one between a state and a terrorist organization, not between two states. Well, it is a war. Uh, you know, this uh, differentiation you made has ceased to be uh, very relevant because today, unlike in the past, few decades ago, you have terrorist organizations in the Middle East that actually have most of the parameters of uh, being a state. It is a kind of a, a territory or a state being controlled by terrorists. Unlike the situation in the past in which you had ter terrorist organizations that were clandestine and were not having effective rule over a certain amount of territory. So here, Hamas is acting as a state, and uh, therefore what we're having here is a full-fledged war. 
course, in any war, you have a set of operations that you have to that you have to carry out in order to fulfill your mission. But uh, there is no doubt, at least from our perspective, a uh, full-fledged war. Some people you saw compared this uh, this attack with Yom Kippur War. Is it the same? Well, it is. Uh, it has some similarities, but I think it's uh, very different in different uh, in various uh, ways. First of all, we have to face the fact that uh, Israel has been since the day of its birth the most attacked country in the world. So when it comes to attempts to hurt the state of Israel, there has been no state in the international arena that has been attacked more than Israel by conventional armies, by terrorist organizations, mm -hmm. from the sea, from the air, from the land, through cyber, through economic warfare, in any way that you can imagine. So Israel uh, usually manages to deal with those threats, mm -hmm. but it happens at least one in 50 years that we fail. And this is uh, uh, what we have in common with the Yom Kippur War, that we have failed to prevent this surprise against us, and, uh, and uh, we will have to learn the lessons from that. Because we exactly we failed. We exactly failed. Well, Intelligence. We will, that. we will have to inquire on that while, when the war is over. But there is no doubt that despite the massive investment that we have put in defense, we have been surprised. And this is the failure. So who is exactly to account? We will, of course, co conduct an orderly investigation and try to get uh, the lessons uh, from this uh, from these mistakes. Um, but uh, another uh, difference between this surprise and what happened in the Yom Kippur War, that this time civilians were the ones that were hit before, uh, and not only civilians, babies, women, elderly, the elderly, it's really a disaster in that regard. It's shocking, uh, it's barbaric, it is beyond anything that can be called a conventional war. Mm -hmm. It's completely unconventional. And this, of course, requires uh, Israel to uh, conduct, uh, uh, conduct itself accordingly in terms of the severity of the measures we have to take in order to remove this uh, threat. You said that Israel will not negotiate with, uh, with Hamas. What about a Palestinian Authority? There are talks between Israel and uh... And well, we always have been in dialogue with the Palestinian Authority, sometimes formally, sometimes informally. Unfortunately, the Palestinian Authority at this point doesn't play a role in the uh, considerations of Hamas, and therefore it is less relevant. I hope that if we manage to neutralize the Hamas threat, we will be able to re-engage with the Palestinian Authority in a conducive way in order to try to plan a better future. But it's very clear that if we don't if we don't remove the terrorist threat, there's no chance for peace. The only chance for peace in our region is, is if the extremists are beaten. And if the extremists are on the losing side. Uh, and here there was a, a, a clear attempt by Hamas, together with support of uh, Hezbollah and Iran, to try to curtail the attempts to stabilize the region, to stabilize the West Bank in Samaria, to uh, advance peace with other Arab countries. They want to derail that process. And this is why they launched this attack. So unless we have victory over them, uh, they will succeed. Mm. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's... What is the, the, the state of mind of soldiers in Israel? Well, the spirit in Israel is very, very high and very strong. People feel uh, hurt personally, on a personal level, not just because our families, many of our families have been hit, have been, hit, mm -hmm. have been killed or injured or kidnapped, mm -hmm. or staying in shelters, but because of the degree of solidarity we have in our society. And that uh, for any pictures that we see uh, on television and every story that we hear, we feel personally hurt. And therefore, people are very eager to participate in the effort to uh, win this war, to overcome the effort, to help the soldiers, to the soldiers themselves to fight for the country. Uh, so the motivation is very high at this moment. It is my last question. Please tell me why semantic is important in this case, because you saw 
some uh, television, some politicians uh, referred at Hamas at uh, freedom fighters or militants. What are the right terms, the right semantic right well, now? I think that if uh, reasonable people, after looking at the pictures that we saw, are not changing the terminology, I think that they have a problem, a moral problem, a, pro a, more, a problem of judgment. Because it is very clear when you look at the modus operandi of the terrorists that uh, they are not freedom fighters and they are not militants, they are just terrorists. Because only terrorists can do things that the things that they've done. Thank you very much, Ambassador.